Hello. Welcome to the uh, protest of uh, Polish women and other people supporting Polish community uh, against the tightening of abortion laws in Poland and also other attacks on democracy. Uh, we start with the Imperial March that has been that has been a team uh, that people in Poland play now every day at 7 p.m. Uh, to connect, to show the problems, and to mark the strike. gathered here today in order to protest. First of all, our uh, strike has been initial, initialized by the judgment of the politicized constitutional court uh, on that has been held on October 22nd, stating that abortion due to a high probability of severe and irreversible uh, impairment of the fetus uh, or an incur incurable disease that threatens its life is inconsistent with the Polish constitution. Such a decision is de facto banning all the abortions in Poland because other um, possibilities for the terminations of the pregnancy that is in uh, situations of rape uh, or when the mother would die uh, in the result of the problems uh, these are not uh, so often uh, grounds for the abortion and 98% of the terminations are exactly due to the dysfunctions, uh, malfunctions of the, of, the, of the fetus. So basically, uh, this is not yet law, but it will soon be uh, after this uh, judgment will be uh, public, uh, uh, will be put into the publication in the Journal of Laws. So first of all, I wanted to tell you that we, our protest here is peaceful. We do not want to, uh, we are angry, we are very angry, but we do not want to uh, use forces and we want to be here peacefully. And I think that's a very important statement because in Poland, Jarosław Kaczynski is in his uh, statement that has been published yesterday, actually, uh, encouraging people to use force uh, is actually um, kind of by his words provocating uh, the fight between our nation. We sadly see that our nation is divided. It is divided between people uh, who are pro-democracy and others who definitely uh, agree totally be under the regime, which is not democratic anymore. We are very deeply concerned that this decision on abortion, it's, it's just the peak of an iceberg for the democracy. As uh, I have been reading a lot of uh, sources in Polish about it, and I think one of the best uh, statements that I heard about this uh, judgment is from Elżbieta Korolczuk, the doctor of sociology, that said that actually this conversation uh, about abortion is not a discussion of whether I am for and against abortion, but whether who is deciding about it. Is this a government or is this the directly person uh, who is who, who this decision is concerning? And I think that is uh, one of the most important uh, observations here that this whole discussion is not necessarily whether I am deciding whether I'm for abortion or not, but whether I have a choice. So we are here pro that the woman can choose uh, what to do. We are here for women's rights and the uh, fundamental human rights. So this is a, a dispute that is about the very essence of democracy. Uh, and there is no democracy when a minority, and here in Poland, it, we're talking about 
ultra Catholics uh, that is building the state only for itself and introduce, in, introduces such a closed system where actually uh, the rest has to adapt to it. Uh, and their moral choices as regards the family or the sexual life or whether they're having children or not is actually is actually uh, kind of dis disputable. <laughs> Welcome everybody and thank you very much for your support. That you are all here. Thank you. This was one of the themes of the strike that we wanted to play here as well to show the solidarity with uh, people stri uh, becoming on strikes and protesting in Poland. And our next speaker is Professor Magdalena Kmak. She's a professor of public international law, migration and minority research at Obo Academy University. Welcome, Magd. Thank you so much. I'm speaking to you here from three positions, as a woman, as a Polish and Finnish citizen, and as a professor of law. And as a law professor, I want to say this. This judgment introduced practically total ban of abortion. And through this, it violates women's rights, it violates human rights. Second, this judgment has been issued by a tribunal which through the continuous legal changes has been undermined and lost its credibility. It's not an independent court. As a Polish citizen, I want to say this. This government has been undermining democracy. This government has been violating rights of its citizens. This government now is calling to a cultural war and is calling to violence. This government has to go. As a Finnish citizen, I want to say this. I urge this government to take this up in the international activities. This is extremely important for rights of women uh, in Europe and all around the world. Finally, as a woman, I want to say this. This is a war against Polish women. Every woman, woman should have a right to decide about their health, about their family, about their life. And no one can force women to live in pain and suffering. And I want to finish with a quote from Olga Tokarczuk, a Polish author who last year got Nobel Prize in Literature. And she said this, women rights are not given once and for all. We need to guard them like any achievement extending the scope of civil liberties and human dignity. From now on, we are all warriors. I chciałam powiedzieć po polsku. Wszyscy jesteśmy wojowniczkami, wszyscy jesteśmy wojownikami. Dziękuję. Thank you. My body, my choice. The evening here in Helsinki is dark, but the decision of the Constitutional Tribunal in Poland on the 22nd of October is darker. That day, the Constitutional Tribunal ruled that the abortion law of Poland would be unconstitutional. 
the tribunal decided that the access to abortion, including on the ground of severe fetal impairment, would become illegal. The decision made, as Magdalena has just pointed out, abortion practically impossible in Poland. And it would make the abortion legislation one of the most restricting ones anywhere in the world. The ruling is a blatant attack on women's rights, on sexual and reproductive rights, and on human rights. And we here, we know too well that women's rights are human rights. Sexual, sexual and reproductive rights are human rights. And the rights of sexual and gender minorities are human rights, dear friends. Also, the rulers of any European Union member state know this very well, even if they try to blame otherwise for their own political interests. The night is windy as well. The tribunal decision and the ruling is ridiculous, regressive, but also cruel, and would impact lives of women in Poland uh, and put them at great risk. And it also would violate Poland's, Poland's obligations under international human rights treaties. These treaties oblige Poland to refrain from retrogressive, retrogressive measures that roll back women's rights um, to sexual and reproductive health care. Our colleague in Poland, uh, Foundation for Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights, Madoczata Tuletska, a lawyer from our peer organization, said last week in an interview, this is a totally unjustified decision that will lead to inhuman treatment of women. And she is absolutely right. The decision would lead to inhuman treatment both legally and morally, and it could be seen as torture. The judgment is another concrete manifestation of the ruling party's broader attempts to erode the rule of law and democratic principles in Poland. Moreover, the decision reflects the fact that the independency of the judiciary has been undermined. But we see you. We know what is going on. Let us stop this attack. We call upon the European Union to take appropriate measures to ensure that respect for rule of law, democracy, human rights, as stated in the European Union, Treaty of the European Union on Article 2 is held upon. Dear ordinary people of Poland, dear activists on the street, we hear you, we salute you as you take bravely to the streets. We say out loud again, my body, my choice. We stand with you in solidarity tonight. But this is not only a question about solidarity. Attack on access to safe abortion is an attack against all human rights. Human rights are universal and they are indispensable. International human rights bodies and organizations have unanimously and widely condemned the tribunal's judgment. Dear activists, we should not fool ourselves in thinking that this is only about Poland. No, we are facing a much broader threat to sexual and reproductive rights globally. Attacks against sexual, um, women's rights, sexual and reproductive rights, and sexual and gender minorities are orchestrated, coordinated, and well-funded, dear friends. Last week, 32 authoritarian or populist governments from, ar uh, from around the world, including Poland and Hungary, signed a document on slash women's health and strengthening the family. And folks, you all mean, know what that means. We, this, has, this document has no legal basis and is actually an attempt to undermine 
international consensus in support of sexual and reproductive health and rights. A consensus that so many before us fought so hard to achieve. We salute feminists of all generations. Applause to them as we stand here and I turn my last page. I was asked to talk for 15 minutes, but I will end up a little bit earlier because you are bravely standing here in the wind. Um, it's, fine. it's fine, thank you. Cheer, <laughs> good Yes, in Poland too, right to safe abortion is being attacked. We know it. Uh, and it's attacked simultaneously with against attacks against sexual and gender minorities and attacks to education on sexual and reproductive health within schools. This is happening, we know that. Dear participants, these are no coincidences. We shouldn't be fooled, as I said, and we are not fooled. While we demonstrate here I urge all of us to keep distance, to be safe, to respect safety. However, coronavirus COVID-19 shouldn't be used by Poland or any other state for that matter as an excuse to restrict right to demonstrate, right to assembly, right to freedom of speech and expression. Attacks against protesters or demonstrators, violence against them must stop under Poland's uh, international obligations. In 1995, I had the privilege as a very young student to participate in the fourth UN Women's Conference in Beijing exactly 25 years ago with about 50,000 other participants from across the world from Poland, from Finland, but also from practically all, all countries. Sexual and reproductive rights were at the center of the debate in Beijing 25 years ago. They are at the center of global politics today as we stand here. There are forces and people who claim that, are, that they are doing a battle because of children's rights. But history has shown yet and again that this is not, they are not promoting women's rights, nor children's rights, nor sexual and gender minorities' rights, but the opposite. We will not accept this, we will not be quiet. We will oppose misogyny, homophobia, transphobia anywhere. We will fight racism in all its form here and there. Tonight we salute feminists and human rights defenders fighting for sexual reproductive rights across the world and in Poland. We must continue. We will continue. Cieguce. Kitos. Thank you. Thank you. Dear friends, four years ago, I stood on these same steps here in San Tori while the Black Friday protest erupted in Poland. I have a photo of that day when I stood on these same steps where my friend, Donna, was holding a sign that said, I cannot believe it's 2016 and we still have to protest to this. 20 freaking 16. Three years ago, I sat around a table at an NGO office in Warsaw. Christina, the woman who sat opposed to me, told me that the previous week she had just helped a teenage girl who had been kicked from the backseat of a car, bleeding after an illegal back alley abortion had gone wrong. 
Christina told me the woman had been dumped on the streets like a piece of meat or an experiment gone wrong. The night before our meeting with Christina, she told me her phone had rang in the middle of the night. Before picking up the call, she told me she already knew what it was about. Another young woman who was calling her, standing on the rooftop of her building, trying to find one simple reason to want to live after a violent rape had left her pregnant. Christina spoke her out of it that night. One year ago, I faced hostile and homophobic comments from a Polish men's rights activist and leading politician as I was a guest speaker at a high-level international meeting in Warsaw. Not only, he told me, I was not welcome in Poland as a feminist, but even less as a queer feminist. What I experienced that day was only a small taste of what the brave Polish women and queer community have to fight for against every single day. These three stories are not just once-off stories. They are repetitive and a direct consequence of the Polish government's actions to restrict our reproductive rights and our right to a free and joyful life. The latest developments on Poland's abortion ban have sent hundreds of thousands of people to the streets, even during a pandemic. I want to acknowledge these protesters who now, also as we speak and stand here, are fighting, marching, and not giving up, not refusing to have their rights stripped from them. Their leaders, the men who are supposed to represent these people on the streets to protect their rights, have called these people looters and encouraged mobs to go attack them. Dear friends, we are all here because of a collective consciousness that we share, which is anchored in a yearning for freedom, happiness, and joy. I want to be a part of shaping and seeing a better future where meaningful connections, connections and human rights will pave the road towards the next generations and the future to come. I want my Polish brothers and sisters to thrive, not merely to survive. We have a lot to do. Our human rights have to be protected and our commitment to the work must be harder and more dedicated than ever before. All of us have to vote like our rights depend on it. Because as we can see, we are always, always only one election away from our fundamental rights being stripped away from us. As feminists, I call on each and every single one person here to commit to seeking justice beyond country lines. As an intersectional feminist, I call on everybody to make sure that the voices in the movement who far too long have been suppressed are now being heard and made central. As activists, politicians, journalists, bloggers, mothers, or single women, we must carry on the fight wherever we can. These age-old powers and forces that are trying to divide us might try to cut away all the flowers, but I'm telling you here today, they will not keep spring from coming. Let's keep fighting. Thank you. I am a, a parliament member, but I am also the chair for the human rights network in the parliament. So uh, this is why the topic comes very, very close to me as, as well. Uh, protecting and promoting human rights must be at the heart of all policy. This means that no policy goal should neglect these fundamental rights. Whenever we talk about abortion, we are talking about the human rights of all women, of all pregnant women. The right to decide on one's own body and repro reproduction. In Poland, the Conservative Law and Justice Party is pushing through tightening the already strict abortion law without regard for human rights and democracy. The bill is really unpopular in Poland. The Polish abortion law is already extremely strict. In Poland, women's organizations have estimated that more than 200,000 Poles are already 
have to resort to legal and potentially dangerous abortions or travel abroad to obtain an abortion due to strict laws. This is a shocking figure straight from Europe in the 2020s and unfortunately Poland is not the only country in Europe with strict abortion legislation. Dangerous and difficult to obtain abortions are a clear violation of human rights. The corona pandemic has also made it more difficult to obtain an abortion in Europe. Especially in countries with strict legislation, it is clear that corona makes it difficult for a pregnant woman to travel or obtain medicine from other districts or countries. If safe abortion is not available domestically, Human rights organizations have also been concerned about the lack of access to reproductive health services following staff redeployment due to the corona pandemic. Here again, the worst effects of the corona are put on those in the most vulnerable of all, minorities and those who have experienced violence. Abortion is not reduced by reducing the right to abortion, but by improving access to contra contraception and promoting sexual rights. In the situation in Poland, it is worrying that there is also a desire to limit access to contraception and sex education. Things could not be done more wrong. In Poland, the decision to tighten the abortion law has got people on the streets and protests are expected to continue. The message from the protesters is that the government is waging war against women. In this horrible situation, it has been moving and touching to see how the defense of women's rights has united Poles. Demonstrations have also involved groups who are not usually seen in the pro-abortion forces, such as farmers with their tractors. The miners' union has also condemned the tightening of the abortion law and expressed concern about the state of democracy in Poland. While in my work as a politician, I am constantly concerned about the impact of conservative and far-right movements on human rights. This demonstration here today, as well as the protest of Polish people in Poland, really give strength and hope, and this is how we should see it. Only together will we overcome the conservative forces that gnaw at democracy and human rights all over the world at the moment. While this work is sometimes heavy and frustrating, together we can continue it. The situation in Poland is a strong indication that the development of human, women's rights is not straightforward. Reducing the rights of women and minorities goes in hand with the rise of the far right. This is a threat that we must fight together across party borders and across national borders. Promoting the rights of women and minorities in Poland is also our business here in Finland. Thank you so much.
speakers today who came to support Polish people in the fight against tightening of abortion laws and the general fight towards democracy when everybody can be themselves and have their voice and does not to be afraid to be oppressed. this uh, meeting, the strike, with uh, a very, I think, uh, up to the point, um, there has been opinion, so not all the, there were two judges actually that uh, uh, put a descending opinion in, in, for, the, for the judgment. And one of them was Professor Leon Kieres, who's actually very well known and uh, very, uh, respected uh, scholar, a law professor, who said that the law, contra contrary to morality, in his, in his dissenting opinion, he said that the law, contrary to morality, cannot oblige to heroism and formulate requirements that are impossible to be met by the average addressee. And I think that's what the law here is requiring, requiring people to be heroic. Uh, and it's everybody's own choice what they want to do in that kind of situation. So the problem here, as many speakers have spoken up, is also that there is no support for women, there are no psychologists, uh, there are no places to put sick kids if they really decide to have such, there are no places uh, to make safe abortions, and women have to, have to go abroad. So the tribunal has actually forced women and their families to heroism and self-denial, denying the woman the right to decide about themselves, their family, and their faith. And these are the words of Professor Keras, but I think they are here very much. It is very much needed to say that it's not uh, that the, the decision of tribunal is not the voice of the whole Poland. That even in the tribunal we can we can find people who are actually of uh, the members who are of different opinion. Thank you so much for coming here and supporting us, supporting Polish women and women uh, actually globally for fighting for their rights. But I think the women's rights are so important for everybody to have especially the abortion laws now that we're talking about here, it's, it's, it's the issue of the family. And I thank you very much for your support.